now I'm delighted to say Bevan Parsons uh, is with us, fresh from qualifying for the Olympic Games in Paris. Bevan, how does that sound? Sounds good. I could get used to hearing that, to be honest. Uh, have you? Are you going to get one of the Olympic tattoos? That is um, apparently everybody gets them once you once you're entitled to. Everybody just has to. Um, I'll have to get there first, make it to to Paris. But um, yeah, if I do, I definitely will. We're already having discussions of where we'd put them and everything. So yeah, it's in the works. Um, the the moment of qualification. What's that actually like? Because this has been a, a very long process to get to this and and a lot of a lot of eggs were put in the basket of, of qualification for the olympics so is it joy is it relief is it a mixture of all this what's it like um it, like for me it was just pride like i was just so proud to be you know a part of this team um because there's been so much hard work gone and gone on for the last eight years to try qualify so i was just so proud to be in the right place at the right time and and be able to get it over the line you know we had all of our families over in France and it felt like we had home advantage over there and and to, you know, put smiles on their faces, you know, it, it was just such a proud moment. Were there nerves before that game against Fiji, Bevan? I mean, it was a 10-5 win in the end, but I, both teams knew exactly what was on the line. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think bef- for the lead-up, we were all trying to keep our nerves to ourselves ourselves, and, and not really discuss, but as soon as the game was over, like... It, it all came out of the woodworks and none of us had slept. We'd hardly been able to eat. You know, our rest and heart rates were up in the hundreds. So, um, yeah, the nerves were through the roof, but we we're all trying to manage it and just get it over the line. It it uh, was a goal that you've had for, for quite some time. You mentioned your family being there and I think one of your family members maybe reminded you of a, of a goal, a life goal, a sporting goal that you'd written down in school as a, as a kid. Yeah, um, in school, just one of those exercises... Um, you know, what is your goals in life? And people put down, you know, be happy or be a millionaire or whatever. But I remember just putting down, I want to go to the Olympics. And at that stage, I didn't know what for, what I'd even be playing. I definitely didn't know it'd be for, you know, rugby sevens, but I just knew I really wanted to go. So it's been a goal for as long as I can remember. It's a slog, isn't it? Uh, you travel around the world and it all comes down to one fifth sixth place playoff in the end uh, so it's like as you say uh, an eight year process but it's eight years of slogging to be basically an overnight success in in the end um were there points along the journey where you were thinking i'm not really sure this is going to happen for us um with the talent in the dressing room like you know when you're playing with the likes of Amy Lee Murphy Crow Lucy Mulhall like i could list out the full team like when you have that much talent in a dressing room, you know that it's going to happen. Like you just have that, you have to have that self belief, or else it definitely won't happen. Um, so to to qualify through the series was, you know, amazing, and and we knew we'd get there somehow through Europeans or through the World Repechage. But to get through, you know, Plan A is to get through in the World Series, and we did that. So not sure if we fully believed that that would happen, but it did. So yeah. When did you realise that the talent in the dressing room was going to be in, enough then on the other side of this to, to have the confidence that actually this is going to happen for us? Because uh, that, that, in a way that's a bit freeing and I, I know you've spoken before about the advice your dad gave you to to play more like a kid and and, and um, I guess uh, be more in the moment and the, the psychology around that, uh, you can read a lot about that and you can and, and kind of understand deeply. But when, when did you begin to feel like, um, okay, this is a serious goal, but actually we're going to be able to achieve it? Um, well, in recent times, you know, we had, we started off the season so well and we were on a high, you know, we were getting to semi-finals on a regular basis and we built up a 16 point lead, you know, from the likes of GB and Fiji, who were our main competition. Um, so we were in a really good place and then we had, you know, a bit of a, a dip around Vancouver and then Hong Kong coming eighth in both of those tournaments. But, you know, the belief was still there and the resilience was there to bounce back. And we did a lot of work with our psychologist, Siobhan, um, and we came up with this sort of mantra of be buzzing, be present, be together. And that was our whole thing. Like we were just working as like a hive, as bees all together. And we just wanted to be buzzing. That was our sort of our theme for Toulouse. And and I think it just really showed. And and that sort of focus on us and, and trying to, you know, block out what Fiji do or GB or the rest of the competition do and just focus in on us 
sort of instilled that belief again that you know we we are good enough and yeah we had a bit of a a winding road to to get there in the end but but we always knew that we could do it that work you did with Siobhan um, like sounds so important from a psychological perspective and, and I've read that in, in advance of the game you're kind of telling yourselves we don't need to make this a pressurised event which sounds like a simple thing to say but, but from a from a team perspective it can it can I guess force everyone to relax a little bit yeah like we all when you're playing in front of your family um, you know usually they're up in the middle of the night watching us because there's so much time difference but to actually have them there at a sevens tournament um, that brings some pressure because you obviously want to perform in front of them. Then there's the pressure of knowing what's at stake. But we just told ourselves, you know, we have three shots at this. If it's not through the World Series, we can do it through Europe or then we can go on to the World Repechage. And, and we sort of took a, a deep breath and, and our coach, TJ, sort of was like, let's not stress about this. Let's not pressurise it. Go out and, and chase performance and not results. And, and then, yeah, it all, it all worked out. The attention will turn to Paris, uh, maybe not immediately, Raven, but, but but eventually. Like, Are there realistic medal expectations or what's the hope? Yeah, absolutely. That's like, to go into Olympics and, and not hope for a medal, I think it's, it's daft. Like, we're, of course, we're, we have so much talent, like I said, and we're such a hardworking group of girls that, you know, we have a full year to prepare and we definitely want to come home with an Olympic medal. Will there be a be? I'm sure there's a lot of communication between the sevens team and the fifteens team as well, off the back of the Six Nations. Did you, did you manage to to keep in touch with the with the Six Nations team at all, or or watch any of those games, or how how was that experience for you? Yeah, absolutely. Like, we're Irish women playing rugby for Ireland, and and it's it's not one versus the other. We're very much together, and we hang out in the HPC together, and. We're very much the the one group. Um, we're playing different codes, but yeah, I've stayed in touch with all of them. We've support like we watch every single one of their games, no matter where it was. I I know we watched the France game, you know, the night before our Hong Kong tournament. So you know, we're there to support each other, and vice versa. They've all been supporting us and celebrating this with us, and and we really are the one group. It was obviously a dreadfully disappointing Six Nations, but I guess the the one positive you can take from it is that it is a young team. When you look at the number of caps in comparison to other countries, there's so much inexperience there that that campaign can only help. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Um, even with us, like this has taken eight years for us to qualify for this Olympics. Like we've been trying and trying. There's girls that have been knocking on this door for so long, and then you know a programme just needs to grow and develop and people need to get more experience and the girls will have learned so much from the Six Nations and, and they're such a hungry group of girls and, you know, it's only up from here. And people have been watching you play rugby, it seems like for a long time, but they forget that you're still quite young, only 21, nearly 22, is that right? Yeah, 21. Uh, so there's obviously plenty of time for you to have both a 7s and a 15s career. Which of them do you actually prefer playing um in in the game itself, which is the easiest slash more crack to play? This is the million dollar question. I get asked this on the daily. Um, it's like asking to choose your favorite child. Like they're so different. With sevens, I get to travel the world and play in these really cool events. And, and you know, we're such a tight knit group because there's so few of us and it's a really fast paced game. So exciting. And then on the other hand, there's 15s where you can play in front of a, a stadium of people at home and and you can't really replicate either feeling so I just love playing both and any chance that you get to play for Ireland is just so something that you have to cherish so I don't mind what code it is I just love playing both Do you hope that maybe after this Olympic cycle is over that uh, there's a way of the sevens qualifying and the say the Six Nations for example not overlapping as much as they do that maybe World Rugby could look at scheduling to change it so that you can have the best players playing both at different times in the year Yeah like like that would be the the dream wouldn't it that you can play both um, and neither would be compromised that would be amazing but at the same time I think there is enough players and and enough depth to have two very strong teams in the future so I think that's something we also have to work towards um, but yeah if, if if that could be a possibility I'd love that Have Balna Slow ever had any Olympians Bevan or are you the first? 
Um, yeah, there's uh, Saif Brazil. She does the modern pentathlon. Um, so, yeah, I'm not on my own in, in that sense. There aren't many of you, though. No, <laughs> not yet. Um, obviously, the other thing that you have uh, is a, a college career going on at the same time. How do you manage this? Um, it's just support, really, and, and reaching out with, you know, your lecturers. And I've been so blessed that, that DCU have been really just so helpful for me this year. Like, they've really taken on board that it was going to be, you know, a very hectic year. We're traveling all over the world and and there's so much at stake. So they really, really helped and, and guided guided me through and, and you know, it's helped me keep both balls in the air. I was going to say, do you think it's important to not just have one identity as a professional athlete and actually also at the same time be developing other strands so that if injury happens or whatever, because, you know, we, we, we talk to athletes all the time who, who end up having a career cut short through injury and they're not really prepared for what happens next in life. But uh, it seems like rugby, among other sports, uh, has been better than most at actually saying, no, you need to continue to develop as a, as a person and make sure that you're ready for whatever's coming next. Yeah, I think it's vital, like even for your own peace of mind to have something else going on in the background to be able to take your mind off rugby or vice versa. Um, and we've been so lucky that, you know, everyone in um, in the RFU is very supportive of you of you doing that. And Rugby Players Ireland have been so good, you know, for linking up with colleges and courses and making sure that people, you know, are proactive in developing themselves off the pitch as well. Has it been nice to have the time to unwind, Bevan, since the since he's landed back from Toulouse? Uh, judging by social media, there's been quite a quite a, a few fun celebrations since you landed in Dublin Airport. Yeah, yeah, we've been celebrating, we've been celebrating um, in style, to be honest, and and I'd say they're going to go on for a couple more days. So, yeah, just really enjoying and and soaking it all in. Well, listen, enjoy it. Congratulations, Bevan. Thanks a million for joining us. Cheers. Thanks so much. It's uh, Bevan Parsons, one of the stars of our sevens team who have qualified for the Olympic Games in Paris in 2024. It's one of the first events, actually, those first few days, uh, the team sports are happening. So uh, fingers crossed we'd all get to watch those games free to air in the Olympics next year.